Hey good people, it is Tashara from Politics and Fashion here today with the video that is all about the House of Goryard, honey. Yes, I am a Goryard fanatic. I don't say that often about many brands because I'll shop at Target, at Goodwill, at Saks, at Nordstrom. It really does not matter to me as long as I'm finding high quality pieces that are going to stand the test of time. But this here Goryard thing, honey, we locked and loaded. We together like peas and carrots, like Forrest Gump and Jenny. Okay, and, and if we locked in, ain't no switching up. And as a result of that, uh, I want to share with you all today a bit of a historical overview of the brand. You all know I've done this before with Louis Vuitton and Loewe to also talk to you about what is in my growing collection with prices because I do know it can be hard to find prices of these items and to also share with you what is on my wish list. So if that sounds like a good old time, honey, make sure you have subscribed to my channel. Give the video a big thumbs up if you love it and let's get started. Before I get started, let me share with you what I'm wearing today. It is a dress by Simon Miller. It is a maxi dress. I wore this over the weekend at the Chicago Planner Conference for my Justice Live taping. Justice is my podcast that I filmed with my best friend Margot. It is delicious. You gotta have it. I, I, and I'm not even gonna hold you. Okay, I don't say that a lot over here on this channel, but if you were looking for something that is sexy, that is sultry, and that is comfortable, this is the one and not the two. And also, I'm wearing a lot of earrings. My ear sack has been quite impressive lately, and the majority of them are from a brand called Tiny Lux. Let's jump into the history, y'all, because what I find really interesting is that Goyard was actually started in 1853, which is a year before Louis Vuitton. And even though Louis is much more recognizable, Goyard is older. Now, a reason for the lack of kind of recognition is because compared to a lot of the other big luxury heritage houses, Chanel, LV, Valentino, etc., Goyard has the fewest number of stores. People ask me all the time, hey, where'd you get that Goyard piece? And I'm like, sorry, it's only available in the boutique. And that rubs a lot of feathers, y'all. Goyard to this day does not have any online retail, meaning it's no e-commerce whatsoever. You can buy things secondhand. You can buy them pre-loved. Um, I've even seen things go up for bid on like Sotheby's, for example. However, you cannot purchase anything online directly from the Goyard website. It is very annoying. I know, and trust me, as someone who lives in the Washington DC metro area, I find it to be very aggravating because I have to drive either to New York where there is a store inside of Bergdorf Goodman, it's a concession boutique, and there is also an actual standalone boutique. Other than that, the next one is in Miami. Now let's talk a bit about Francois Goyard because he actually came to the company that later became known as Goyard in 1845 where he served as an apprentice. When his predecessors passed away, they actually gave him the company. He remained there for 30 years and took it to a completely different level. It became one of the premier places to purchase luxury. And you all have to remember that right around this time, travel international and travel for longer periods of time was becoming more accessible to everyday people because of steamships. And so these boats were able to go longer distances and people needed trunks to be able to travel. He remained at the helm for 32 years until he turned it over to his son. And he's the one who actually created the logo that is very popular with the Ys. And this company, y'all, was the luggage maker for the most elite. Everyone from down at Buckingham Palace to over at the White House, if you see pictures of them traveling, they have mounds and mounds of Goyard suitcases. I happen to love all of the vintage Goyard pieces to see how thoughtful the trunks were and how they were made to really think outside of the box as far as what someone would need to be able to travel and to travel well is something that just is after my own heart. You all know if you're not new around these parts that I love to travel and to think about those accoutrements that just kind of serve some role to make your travel experience luxurious. I'm here for it. And I'm not alone in that. Uh, so was the current owner, Jean-Michel Signoles. I'm giving him a, a uh, Spanish 
last name because I can't pronounce it in French. I'm sorry for my ignorance. Someone will correct me down below, I'm sure. Um, but he purchased his first vintage trunk in the 70s, fell in love with the brand in the late 1990s. He actually bought the entire company, has continued to make great investments in the Heritage House, has not brought e-commerce. Somebody at him. Somebody at him and let him know uh, that we needed to be online. Or maybe we don't, right? There's something that I think is really amazing about what it means to just keep something small and to ensure that the quality and craftsmanship remains intact. Um, someone will say maybe a little bit of exclusivity. And I understand that. But also, I really do love the idea of having to plan your purchase, going in, sitting down, and having a conversation about what you are after. It, in many ways, just elucidates what I think the old days likely were for the brand. And so, it is one of the few luxury houses that is still privately owned to this day. And we're going to jump into what I have from the brand. Here's another fun fact. I told you all that Edmund Goyard is the one who created the logo that we know to be synonymous with the brand, but he also created the canvas, which at that time was revolutionary because so many other luggage makers were either using leather, but mostly they were using linen cloth. And he wanted to create something that was going to be long wearing and that was going to be durable. And that is where the canvas came from. And so I got my first Goyard piece last summer at the boutique in New York, not the concession in Burger but the actual boutique. Um, I think I had first gone to the concession. That may have been my first time at a Goyard location. And I took a look at a couple things and I knew what was on my wish list. But for me, a great place to start was with an accessory or with a small leather good. This is canvas, but you're probably going to hear me say small leather good a lot throughout this video. Um, and uh, I am someone, y'all, who is obsessed with writing, with stationery, with planning, with productivity. A lot of my earlier content was actually around um, those bucket areas, and I just left Chicago Planner Conference, okay, manifested that opportunity. And so I'm true to it is what I'm trying to say. Uh, loved me a good old Lisa Frank notebook, a good old Sanrio Hello Kitty, okay? If my people are with me, let me know down below. And so uh, these types of items, pen pencil pouches, um, notebooks, agenda covers, all of those things are just my jam. And I knew that I wanted to treat myself for a major accomplishment last year at the end of the summer. And as a result, I wanted to get a piece by Goyard. And I didn't want my investment to be too high. I wanted it to be something that I felt like I could afford and that I wasn't going to break the bank. Because among the, the luxury houses, Goyard does tend to be at the higher end of the luxury price point scale. Um, um, and so this is, if you know anything about the planner community, an A5 size agenda cover. It does not have, y'all, any rings on the inside. And instead, what I have done is just placed a regular notebook inside of it. Uh, this is something that I think I got from a small stationery shop at home. I won't open it because it is actually what I use for my daily journal, my gratitude list, etc. Now, the inside of it is leather. It is just the outside that is canvas. It is hand stitched all the way around. I just simply tuck this notebook into the back flap and then you have this front flap that you can also stick things inside of as well. The one thing about this that I do not like, I'll be honest with you, is that I do think it could have little pockets here. That definitely, I think, would have made it a bit more useful. And now I have seen people use these types of notebooks to plan in. For example, you could easily put what's called a disc bound system in here. And so it would just go on this one side with your discs and then it would close on top. Let me just show you the width of the amount of space that you have there. You could also put something much thinner in here. I'm thinking actually about switching this out and putting a smaller notebook on the inside of it. Uh, one last little piece about it that I will mention is this small stamp that Goyard often does that simply says Goyard there. Um, I love the size. I love the color. 
I probably could not be convinced to get like a handbag in this color or to get maybe even a piece of luggage in this color. But for me to have this nice pop inside of my bag, I always travel with this. Well, not always, but I'm going to have this or my LV agenda, one of the two. Um, but it is a good travel accessory as well. And again, given how many ways I can use it, I'm just sure I'm going to have it forever. And I'm actually really looking forward to one day. I don't don't know when getting it personalized because that is some of the services that Goyard offers. Now, I do not have the receipt for this, unfortunately. I wish that I did, um, but I know I paid much less for it than it is currently on resale sites for. Right now, if you look online, if it's in great condition, new condition is going for between $1,100 and $1,500. I paid definitely less than $1,000, and I believe it was, it was between $400 and $600 US. So if this is something that you're interested in, go to a boutique. I would not purchase it resale. And I also think it's a great way to dip your toe into the brand. Next up is the Vendome bag. This is the PM size. It is a little sister to the MM size. And it's named after a square in Paris. I've never been there, but from the website, Goyard said it's one of the most beautiful squares in all of Paris. Therefore, they named the bag after it. What I like is just the very classic shape of it. I've mentioned LV a lot in this video. I probably will continue to do so because this is kind of similar to the Louis Vuitton Alma bag and there may be other luxury brands that have a similar shaped bag to this because I think it is a classic style. Um, it fits for me more than enough. It actually will fit sideways a full size wallet and it's not so small that it's a micro bag but it's not so big that it's given like mom bag with go-gurts and juice boxes. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just enough for me. Um, I love the little wooden pieces of hardware that are on both sides of the bag. I've shared with you all before these great details like the pull tab on the side that has the G and then also the zippers that have a G as well. It's the small things for me and you can wear this bag crossbody with a strap. It has two D rings here. And what I also love is when you open it, I have the dust bag inside y'all, but you have this really bright, pretty yellow color, almost honestly the same shade as my agenda. This bag comes in about 11 different colors, and I should mention that for Goyard, the coated canvas um, has a very wide range of colorways. Now, every item may not be made in that colorway, but you have lots and lots of options, okay? Now, what you do have to keep in mind, though, is that not every store is going to have every single color in stock. When I was at the store in New York, um, they had this color and they also had the black. I knew I did not want a black bag. And she also may have showed it to me in blue, but it's really hard for me y'all to convince myself to invest in a luxury handbag that is not in a neutral color. One day I'll get there, but just kind of the way my brain is set up right now and how my savings and my checking account is linked, I need to be able to wear my items as much as possible to truly get my cost per wear out of them. And at that time, um, this was probably the most I spent on a handbag or close to the most I spent on a handbag. So let's get into the price. This bag was $3,260. I could not find the price of this bag anywhere. Okay. When I tell you, nowhere. When I knew I wanted it, because I'd seen it in February during fashion week, and I got it in late summer. Between then and when I purchased it, I was constantly searching the bag. I was looking for reviews. I was uh, trying to find pricing. I was on the purse blog, the forums, the places. Could not find it anywhere, y'all. So at the time of me filming this, I hope that helps someone because I could not find it. Maybe I could have called the boutique and asked, but that didn't cross my mind until now. So I just waited until my money was right 
and I knew that it was going to be somewhere in the range that I thought it was going to be in. Um, and it has been just such a joy to have. And also, I didn't mention that it has these lovely feet on the bottom. And then once again, we have there the Goyard kind of embossing on the bottom of the bag. Now, when I was there, I thought about getting a strap, but I was like, oh, don't really want to pay $400 for a plain leather strap. So I got this instead. I got this silk scarf and y'all, it is humongous. I have been thinking about wearing this as kind of like my winter scarf until it gets really cold or my fall scarf because silk actually keeps you really, really warm. People don't know that, but um, it traps heat well. And I just feel like with a nice wool coat or with my black and white normal Kamali puffer coat, this could be a really nice pop. I tend to wear this, y'all, as a top. I actually have a TikTok that I'm gonna show you how I wear it. You can either tie it around your neck like this and then tie it around your waist or wear it as kind of this classic um, triangle and you tie it once in a knot on your back. What I also did when I was in Greece though was wear it as a swimsuit cover up because if you do have it as a triangle, it can fit around your waist. I'm the kind of person again that believes in cost per wear so I'm going to do everything I can to definitely get my miles out of this. The scarf was $460 so the total before tax of these two was $3,720 and then I paid 8.88% in taxes which means my total was $4,050.16 and that is my next two Goyard purchases. Let's get into two more. So let's go now to Miami for swim week. I'm just thinking about this. I went from having no go yard to having one, two, three, four pieces in one year. And the year still is not over yet. So um, I've had a great year and I'm grateful as far as go yard is concerned, that's for sure. And so when I was in Miami, First one week in July, I went to Ball Harbor, which has a Goyard boutique. Ball Harbor is, in my opinion, one of the best shopping experiences in the world. I mean, there's freaking koi ponds in the middle and palm trees and there's great food there. Um, it is just a luxury lover's dream. And even if you just love architecture, go the next time you are in Miami. And so when I go there, it is such a beautiful place until I just naturally get a little spendy. And I wasn't actually looking for anything. I thought to myself, okay, this could be a great time to start now my travel accessory collection by Goyard, but I didn't know for sure what I wanted. But the first thing I saw is this. It is a sunglass holder or an eyeglass holder. I shared this with you all in I think my um, shopping haul or fall luxury haul. It was definitely in a video. I will link it down below if I can remember which one. Um, but again we have that Goyard like pop with the yellow leather on the inside. This smells so good y'all. It smells like leather and double mint. Um, it's been inside my purse, obviously. It has that one snap right there. It has a little G embossed on the metal. As you can see, these two match perfectly. Simply can go inside of the bag. Fits with a lot of extra space. And this is what I have, y'all, every single day. It goes from bag to bag to bag. If it's not in a bag, it is on my desk or it is on my nightstand because I, if I don't have my sunglasses in here, I do have my eyeglasses. And so from that perspective, if somebody had said to me, hey, do you wanna get a luxury um, sunglasses case? I would've been like, girl, please. But now that I have it, and this was a gift, I say to myself, well, damn. It actually is one of the most practical things that I have because I actually do use it. And so, so happy that it is part of my Goyard collection. This was about $350. 
And then the last thing is the item that I had my eye towards, at least this category of pieces when I went into the boutique, is a toiletry clutch. They may not call it this, maybe they call it a pouch, but for me, it serves two purposes. Number one, I put my toiletries in it when I am traveling, and I also use it as a day-to-day -day clutch. I love to put it inside of a tote as a way to keep my bag organized. Um, I was looking first, y'all, at this toiletry pouch, which is something that is pretty popular for the brand. And I don't know, I just wasn't excited by it. I was just like, ugh. Oh. Plus, I felt like the customer service at Bar Harbor that day was not the best. And so it wasn't really kind of being sold to me as something that I needed. And so um, after a little while, I just kept kind of circling the boutique, taking my time. Do not let people rush you in luxury boutiques, by the way. You are spending a lot of money. And I don't care if it's for a card case or a $10,000 runway piece. You deserve to be treated very well because it is still a luxury item to you. And so I'm just taking my time looking around and I see this in a case and the sales associate said, oh yeah, I actually you know, just unboxed that. That just came in today. And sure enough, it was one of their newest pieces. And I didn't think the price was that egregious because it has obviously the classic coated canvas and one of my favorite colorways, by the way, but it also has a lot more leather pieces than you typically see at Goyard. And so this top is leather and so are the corners and then you have here the wristlet you know you gotta have that goyard stamping somewhere and in the case of this it is on the inner flap we still have that g as you can see on the zipper and when we open it oh this has a when we open it it has a lot of space I got an oil stain on this while I was in Greece. Whatever. I told you I used it to carry toiletries. It wasn't going to be perfect forever. Um, but it is huge, y'all, because it is not very narrow all the way down. It almost has like a triangle shape, as you can see here. And so it's great to just kind of put under your arms and to go about your business. My travel hack is to put my toiletries in this and let's say a carry-on if I'm trying to pack light. And when I get to my destination, take the toiletries out and then I have my bag for the day. I have loved this since the moment I purchased it. I think I wore it that same day. Um, and it has definitely gotten its cost per wear. And before I forget, I think I paid right around $1,100 for this. And so that is the entirety of my Goyard collection. And trust me, it will be growing because I feel like it is now become an obsession. Um, I'm obsessed and I, and I don't even feel guilty about it, all right? Um, so what is on my wish list? Number one is probably anything, honestly, in this new color called Gredge. It's like if gray and cream had a baby. And what I really like it in, it's in the Allegre bag. The bag that's netting and that has that Goyard kind of canvas flap across the front. Then it has the two wooden pieces. Can't you just imagine me on somebody's exotic island with like a couple apples and orange and a mango in that? I mean, and you just kind of frolicking and you're holding it as you like walk through the sand and the ocean and the waves. I need that. I feel like by 2024, by the end of that year, my life will not be complete. I have not luxuriated in the way that I need to if I don't have something like this to hold completely random items. And then my big goal is the Goyard Saigon bag. I want the one that is structured, not the big one, um, but I think it's still considered the PM size. However, they make it in two types. One is very soft, and I tried that on when I was at the Goyard Boutique, and I honestly just felt like Maybe if I was 15, 20 years younger, the younger me would have loved that bag, but it wasn't sophisticated enough. What I really like is the structured one that has the two pieces of wood in the front. That bag is so good. It is egregiously priced on the resale market. I can tell you right now in store, it's about $5,000. 
I could have been convinced on a good day to actually get that instead of my Vendome bag. However, I knew what I went in there for and I was not going to allow my mind to be changed. I had to respect myself, okay? But it was a close call, y'all. And I especially loved it in the black colorway because the Saigon in black does have the wooden panels. And so there's something about that black and brown that I think is just really good, especially for fall and a nice camel coat. I love it. Now, I don't know if I'm going to ultimately end up getting it in black. Who knows? Again, Goyard has so many colorways. I tend to lean toward the neutrals, but I might pop out here and surprise y'all, okay? The next item is something very functional, another SLG, which is a laptop holder. Um, I've never had like a really nice case to put my laptops in. I usually just get something from Amazon or Target or wherever I am that day and it's purely out of necessity. But obviously I use my computer every single day. I take it traveling with me everywhere I go. So to have something that is high quality to put it in would be very nice. Um, I don't know if I want to stick with kind of the same colorways with everything. I actually think I want to mix every item up. And so I have been thinking about the orange. I've been thinking about the green. I even really love the blue for this. Again, I feel that I am a lot more comfortable with getting color in SLGs than I am handbags. The cost is cheaper, um, but also I'm not trying to match it with anything. And so getting this item in a color only makes sense and something fun especially. And this is likely a stretch goal, y'all, because I have no idea of the price, and I'm sure it's probably something egregious just given the construction, but the D trunk bag... That thing is nasty and rude. It is such a conversation piece. I'm sure it holds nothing but your patience, but it does not matter. It is a piece of art. As a matter of fact, I'm just thinking about what it would look like on a bookshelf, right? You have a whole bunch of just amazing kind of coffee table books, a Tom Ford book, an LV book, just real kind of thick with just amazing photography in the inside of it. And then you put that, just place it delicately right on top. And then you have, you know, a beautiful vase over to the side. Girl, your home looks rich. Just, just the ethos. It's in the air. The aroma given this bag is amazing. And then you're going out on date night. Just have on a nice little black slip dress, a nasty heel, and pull that out. Put that around your wrist. Politely put it up on the bar beside your French 75. I need this. It's a whole lifestyle. I need it. Now, what I'm going to have to do to get it, we don't know, okay? We're not sure yet, um, but don't put it past me because in this damn, girl, it has gold hardware. They rarely do gold hardware. In this gold... Glad to be in God's service. Hey, glad to be in God's service. Glad to be in God's service one more time. He didn't have to let me live. This is a gift from God. It, it really is. And so we love that. Let's figure out the price point. I'll report back to y'all to let you know. Hopefully they have it in Miami so that I can at least see it. And if I come back home with it, just know I hit the lick. Just know I was down there with the Zoes, girl. I, I, I hit the lick and came back with the bag. That's all I'm saying. And that is it for today's video, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. This type of video, again, is so fun for me because I love digging deep into the history of all of the heritage houses, but especially, of course, the ones that I love the most. And so I will link my first two videos that are very similar to this, one all about LV and the second one all about Loewe, my Loewe puzzle bag, down below. In the meantime, though, make sure you are subscribed to my channel. You are following me all over the internet, and I will see you good people in the next video. Peace.